Well, White, we will be getting started in just a bit. We got about five minutes to starting, guys, and we probably will have a little bit of a delay, um, but we will be getting started shortly. So uh, let me just double check and see how we are doing on our YouTube as far as audio. We might get a little bit of feedback there.
All right, guys, we're going to be starting um, in just a few minutes. And again, if you're watching this on the replay, no need to watch the previous time until we start. Uh, you can go to the bottom of the description if you're watching the replay and uh, there will be a start time stamp for you to click on and that'll jump you ahead. So we will get started in a bit. Uh, we have three people already there on our YouTube channel. So thank you for joining. And if you have any um, questions, go ahead and uh, just put them there in the chat, live chat right there. And we'll ask uh, James as we're doing these. I just wanna make sure. Okay, looks like audio is right there. So, keep it set up right there. And, um, we have, uh, hopefully, like I said, if you are also watching, if you want to get into the Zoom call and ask questions just live, um, or like if you want to actually participate. Uh, with some of the stuff, you can go log on to your Final Works account, and in there you should see the link uh, for the invite to Zoom. And I guess uh, now that I have this kind of here, and you all know what you're here to watch, um, which will be learning about the inks that we use in our fine art printing. This will help you as an artist, a photographer, when you're out selling, um, basically giving the quality of your prints. Uh, when people, I know for working in a gallery, one of the things I am told never to have said when we were selling G clay prints is to say reproduction at all of the art. We never were allowed to say that. Um, so we would always say G clay print, G clay canvas print. Um, Knowing the importance and selling the value of your prints, uh, that's a big help on there, you know, because you don't want to spend too long with people like uh, who are just going to kind of, well, you know, it's a print, it's not the real thing. Sell them the value of the print, and uh, this is going to help you with those kind of tips. So we should be starting in a few minutes, and um, we'll take any of your questions. So let me go ahead and turn the security part. So people can just join in. And let me start to have my speakers down here. We'll get a James set up here in a second. And I'm going to turn off my background. I'm going to go ahead. And I'm lucky enough to be out. We got James coming in. And uh, see if I can get my speakers are all down. All right. And we have James joining in. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, mute myself. And we'll let James go ahead and introduce um, our topic uh, tonight. All right. So let me hit. So I'm not sure anything, so I think we're good. Um, so let's see. Um, and, then I, and then I guess you'll have some videos to show, so I'll... I'll... Well, we'll have like, uh, pictures to kind of show, kind of going through some of the stuff, but... Okay. Okay, all right. Um, okay, so uh, are we ready? I think so. Um, okay. 6.30 and uh, we're good to go, and you have enough light over there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I sure do. Um, Everybody can see James. And uh, let's see... And I was kind of late posting the the uh, the the notification, and we're we're recording live on YouTube as well. So, 
so people can watch this on YouTube. And so, uh, and, and we don't really require a whole lot of participation on this one. So uh, there's a good chance that, uh, uh, you know, if you, if you watch this later on, um, uh, uh, that's going to be just as good. You're not going to miss out on anything. Um, the whole point about doing, doing these live is it, it gives us a chance to get some questions uh, from our customers uh, in real time. Uh, but uh, a lot of times we get these questions uh, 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 afterwards and we can go back and answer them. But um, this particular presentation is going to be about inks and how, uh, how inks, the different inks that we use, uh, the benefits of certain inks over others, the pros and cons, uh, that sort of thing. So what I want to talk about is, uh, uh, aside from the inks that we use, is the uh, um, why we choose to use certain inks. Okay, uh, and it's not just the brands, but you know the the physical makeup of the inks, the, the properties of the inks. There's a uh, in the industry, in the printing industry, whether it be printing, you know. Uh, whether it be a sign shop or a photo lab, um, there, there are certain commonalities uh, in the type of inks used. We lost sound to YouTube. Did we lose sound to YouTube? Okay, so we'll let Melissa get that. Uh, okay. Let me go ahead and give you Okay. Let me get. And thank you for letting us know about that, guys. We'll, we'll start that over to okay, begin with. Hold on. That. Um, am I host now? Yeah, you should get the notification now. Okay, I'm host now. Do I need to do anything? Okay, testing, testing, testing. Uh, so. I'm hearing it. We are fine. So, uh, I guess so. so go ahead. Okay, so I, we, we can fix it if, if it becomes a problem. Uh, we'll fix it and uh, edit that part out <laughs> uh, so that when people watch this, uh, if they're not watching this slide. So I'll let James reintroduce that. So uh, anyway, so uh, what I was saying is there's, there's uh, again, this is, uh, uh, is going to be about uh, inks, the type of inks that we use. And uh, why certain inks uh, have advantages over others, and we're going to also talk about how certain products require certain inks because of the manufacturing process. Um, and then we are going to talk about uh, uh, some of the commonalities, you know, whether it be a sign shop to a photo lab, how uh, a lot of these these companies and organizations, these yeah, these businesses. Uh, primarily, are utilizing the same type of printers uh, uh, from commercial to to fine art. Um, so, uh, so anyway, so I guess uh, to we'll go ahead and get started, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about the history of fine works as it relates to inks. Um, so. Going back to the the early days of Final Works, and really before it was even Final Works, uh, you have to know a little bit uh, about me and what I was doing. Um, I kind of got into uh, digital printing in a in a in a roundabout way. Um, I had gotten actually I had gotten into uh, uh, creating three D graphics. And I was inspired by a trip to Greece uh, back in the 90s. We went to visit some, uh, uh, basically my roots in Greece. And um, uh, one of the things that uh, uh, I was fascinated by was all the textures and uh, all the, uh, the, the design and of, of, of the ancient Greek you know, temples, the, the different sites that, that we decided to uh, uh, visit. 
And I wanted to incorporate a lot of that into 3D graphics, which I was, uh, I'd become really intrigued by. And so uh, after about three years of uh, playing with 3D graphics and uh, uh, I decided, you know what, I, I need to, I don't want to save these just on the computer screen. I want to print these. So uh, I invested in a uh, inkjet printer, was able to, uh, uh, I, I talked to someone at, at my work where I was working and he said, yeah, you need to get yourself a, uh, a, a photo quality inkjet printer. And, uh, and I knew printers could print photo quality, but you know, the, it wasn't anything that to really write home about as far as the, the overall print quality. And so he was printing uh, uh, pictures uh, uh, of, of baseball teams that he was uh, uh, that he was umpiring for um, little league baseball teams. He was doing the the photo. He was taking the pictures, the team photos, and he was printing these. And he had bought himself an inkjet printer, a uh, photo quality inkjet printer. And he showed me the quality. And I was like, oh wow, that looks almost like you know, what you would expect a photo print to look like. And I, I said, I didn't think inkjet printers could do that. And this, keep in mind, this is back in the, you know, the late 90s, I think. Uh, yeah, it was in the late 90s. And uh, mid to late 90s. Uh, so anyway, so uh, I decided, you know what, I think I want to print my artwork. Maybe I need to get a printer like that but I wanted to print a little bit bigger. So I went to the local CompUSA store. I don't know if any of you guys remember CompUSA. And if, if not, it was kind of a, a big box store for computers. I think it uh, was before Best Buy. And so it had everything from PCs to video games, anything computer related, but it, it tended to be you know, for you know, uh, home computer users. Um, consumers. Um, so if, uh, while I was there, I saw this inkjet printer that printed up to 13 by 19. I was like blown away. I said, wow, that is so cool being able to print 13 by 19. And so I ended up, uh, uh, it was very expensive, it was about a $500 uh, inkjet printer, which uh, I thought, well, you know, that was just crazy. Um, but I really wanted to print my 3D artwork and see if I could sell it. And so I uh, bought one of these 13 by 19 printers. It was an HP. And uh, 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 went home and started, uh, found some uh, uh, paper that I could print to. And, uh, oh, whoops, oh, no. Pause just one moment. Our technician is trying to find his way out. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, so, uh, um, so if you want to, can Melissa, if you can yeah, let, let him out. Sorry, folks, but we had a uh, printer technician here working on one of our printers, and uh, I think he got locked in. So, <laughs> we're going to let him out here. But anyway, <clears throat> as Melissa does that, I, I'll uh, keep going. Uh, so uh, as I was saying, so I bought this 13 by 19 inch printer and I bought some, um, I guess it was some photo quality paper and I was just really just impressed um, by the print quality. And so uh, that kind of led me into the world of, uh, of printing. So, one of the things about this printer is uh, because of the size, I, uh, I thought, you know, I, I wanted to print on canvas. And I, so I contacted a local sign shop that, uh, and I don't even recall exactly how uh, I knew that, uh, how I found out that they uh, had canvas, but I, they had these small rolls of canvas um, and uh, got these rolls and started cutting the cutting them up into 13 by 19 inch sheets that I could feed through the printer. And looking back at it, I don't, you know, I'm amazed that it actually worked because uh, this canvas was likely not designed for, for the type of usage that I was uh, 
using for it, nor was the printer designed to uh, handle the canvas like that, but it actually worked. And I thought, okay, you know, I'm getting decent, you know, prints from this. Of course, I knew nothing about, you know, color matching and color calibration and all that good stuff. But, you know, I, I was happy with, with the results that I, I, I got. I wasn't trying to reproduce an, an original work of art. I was trying to print my uh, digital artwork. And so, um, so uh, after uh, doing that for a few months uh, and, and trying to, and, you know, with some success selling those prints, uh, I decided, you know what, let's try some, some other options. One of the things that I noticed is that these prints tend to scratch very easily. So I said, well, you know, what are my options here? So I went down to my local office max and had them print up some 13 by 19. No, I'm sorry, some, some 11 by 17 inch sheets. And I, uh, you know, prints uh, on their uh, toner printers or their laser printers that they, they had. And I was like, oh, wow, you know, this, these are just phenomenal. They, you know, they, they don't smudge or scratch as easily. Um, so I was uh, quite pleased um, by the quality. So uh, it was later on that I discovered that neither one of those prints uh, lasted very long. As a matter of fact, the I would say that toner-based prints, um, yeah, uh, they, I would say, and when, when I stumbled across some of those, maybe about ten years later. Um, uh, they had quite noticeably had faded and yellowed. Um, and then the, some of the, the original inkjet prints that I had created on my inkjet printer at home on some unknown canvas uh, that I bought from a sign shop, uh, uh, it was only a few years later that I noticed that those had faded and washed out and started to look washed out. And so uh, I guess it was, you know, with that that experience with the inkjet printers on canvas, I knew that inkjet had some problems that um, that I, well, they weren't really what I wanted them to be. And so, uh, and again, this was this was uh, I, I with the inkjet, I already knew that, and this was around the time that I was starting to really look at founding fine works. Um, and so I knew that we had to do something better. And so uh, I talked to someone at, uh, at, that that worked at a Kinko's. I don't know if you guys remember a Kinko's, Kinko's, which uh, FedEx later bought out. And they had this big HP 5500 PS. It's a, it printed up to 42 inches wide. And so I talked to one of the technicians there and just to kind of get some ideas to, you know, uh, the quality of the, the printing and um, uh, to be able to print, you know, bigger and, and so forth and whether or not the inks were, a, you know, how good were the inks and so forth. Well, he uh, directed me to a, a website where I was uh, uh, called by the um, Wilhelm Research um Wilhelm research something just but if it, uh, I apologize I'll have to have to get you the link but I, I don't even think that the link that I discovered uh research let me it Wilhelm Research Institute okay I don't think the if you google that you should be able to find it but the uh key and but I haven't been able to find the article uh, that he uh, showed me uh, at the time, but there was an article that they wrote or a, a, a paper that they wrote um, uh, indicating that the inks that the this uh, uh, HP wide format printer was using uh, was archival. And uh, that was kind of a new concept to me. Okay, what exactly does archival mean? And so they said that, well, based upon the fact, it, or based upon if those inks are used on certain types of papers, 
okay, then that print is what will last, you know, for years to come, will last a hundred years or 200 years, uh, depending upon certain types of media that now they went through this process as they simulated basically the aging of the prints. Uh, I'm not sure exactly that how they do that, but they, they do, they have a process where they try to uh, simulate, you know, what the print will go through over that period of time in a very controlled environment. Um, but anyway, so that was my first, you know, exposure to what we call archival inks. Um, and so I thought, okay, well, if we want to print professional quality prints, we need to have a professional quality printer, what, like what Kinko's had, that is capable of printing archival. And of course, I also discovered, you know, with my experiment with printing on canvas, that I needed to find a uh, a canvas that was going to uh, also be archival. So, um, fortunately, HP uh, had uh, already done all the groundwork for that. Uh, they had the canvas uh, that was at the time considered archival. And then they had the printer. So it was at that point that I got into the professional printing, utilizing uh, uh, professional level inks, archival inks, with that with that HP uh, printer. Um, actually, started it at at my house in my garage. Had the uh, HP printer in my kitchen. <laughs> printing people's artwork and people's photos. Um, so uh, how does that, ha you know, what does that have to do with the types of inks we use and different types of inks we use? Well, uh, what I wanted to basically kind of illustrate is how it was an evolution for me uh, to discover, you know, uh, the appropriate inks to start off with. Because those, that first inkjet printer that I bought used something called dye-based inks, okay? Whereas when I upgraded to a big wide format printer that I uh, discovered that Kinko's used and that I could order and, and install in my house, um, granted it took up half the kitchen, uh, that used something called UV pigmented inks. So we're gonna start there. We're gonna contrast the two inks and then we're going to get into some other types of inks afterwards. But early on, uh, in the early, I would say, 2000s, uh, it was kind of at, you know, it was dye-based inks versus pigmented inks. And uh, companies like Epson uh, had started to go the route, and, and HP had started to go the route of pigmented-based inks. Now, the pigmented-based inks were supposed to be more durable, than the dye-based inks. In other words, they, they pigmented, they're particle-based, uh, whereas dye is uh, fully liquid-based. Uh, but they all both had a water carrier. And so nowadays we refer to these types of inks, whether it be dye or um, pigmented, we refer to these as aqueous inks, water-based inks. But, at the, but back then it was either uh, dye-based or pigment-based. Uh, now the dye-based inks had a little bit of an advantage and that was the fact that they had a wider color gamut. Uh, in other words, better accuracy. But the dye-based inks did not last as long. They did not have those archival qualities at the time. Now since then, as, as we'll talk about, that has changed. But um, Really, if you wanted something archival, you had to go with the pigmented ink option, like what what I was using on the HP UV pigmented inks. But the problem was the colors matching, the color accuracy was just awful. Now, for if if uh, a lot of you know uh, high high end photographers. Um, prominent artists were using the HP UV pigment, uh, uh, the HP 5500 PS, which was that particular model with the UV pigmented inks for their work, but they 
we're not getting the potential in in print quality and print accuracy that they could uh, once Epson stepped into that that scene. Now Epson came out with their white line of wide format printers and came up with their ultra chrome pigmented inks, and that was a game changer because suddenly it set a new bar. Uh, if you wanted to have uh, both accuracy in archival uh, prints, then Epson really paved the way. They really set 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 the standard. Uh, so, uh, so I was not real happy with the uh, overall print quality that the uh, uh, the HP was providing. You know, the the resolution was was excellent, the clarity, the sharpness, but the color accuracy was becoming more and more of a problem as more and more artists, and not just, you know, uh, you know, the person wanting to print their own personal family pictures on canvas, which was what I was focused on, as, but as more and more artists discovered finer works, uh, I knew that we needed to, we needed to do better in the quality of the prints. You know, people were, you know, there, there would be always concerns about uh, color accuracy. You know, maybe my prints are too dark or my prints are, uh, the colors are not quite right. And the majority of the time it was because the, you know, the, the file was not what, was not actually what they thought they were seeing on their screen. Uh, and that's a topic dealing with color monitor calibration and how accurate is your screen and so forth. But there are quite a few instances where uh, everything that the artist or the person providing the image uh, did was spot on, but the colors still were lacking. And it was, it was to me, it seemed like it was just too often uh, and it just, we needed to, we needed to step up our game. And, you know, with my research, what, what I, you know, just talking to other people in the industry and uh, finding things online, articles, you know, by uh, photo professional photographers and so forth, so I thought, you know, I think Epson is the way to go. So we then uh, decided, okay, well, uh, we needed to, and and by then I uh, I was no longer running this out of my home. So you know we started a legit, you know small company that that we were operating with just a, a couple of, a couple employees. But uh, we talked about it. and We thought let's go ahead and bring in Epson in and uh, start printing on this Epson. Uh, plus, you know the the volume was had gotten to the the point where we just weren't able to do it just with one printer anyway. So we brought in this Epson and it was a night and day difference in the print quality. We had archivability, we had the, um, um, the color gamut. So it just, it was a, it was game changer. And so, uh, so we started because of that more and more uh, professionals were not discouraged by or, or I should say that we had fewer and fewer instances where professionals were discouraged by the print quality uh, because they were ordering prints that we were printing on the Epson. And so uh, one of the things though with that Epson, with, with Epson is that they introduced these ultra chrome inks. They had already introduced it earlier, but really it, it was becoming, it, it's, it was still kind of not as known uh, not as widely used as the HP inks, but uh, with with the Epson inks, uh, them setting that bar, um, other players uh, realized, or I should say, uh, HP and Canon specifically realized that they needed to up their game. Now, Canon came out with their line of wide format printers, which we, uh, after you know a few years. Uh, with Epson, we discovered that, you know, just the, it, it lacks some things from a productivity standpoint that the, uh, uh, the newer uh, wide format uh, Canon printers were offering. Now, 
the inks on the Canon were basically the same as the Ultra Chrome inks, uh, you know, as far as uh, what they could do, their color gamut and so forth. So we, we didn't lose anything. We just gained some speed and productivity by switching to the, to, to the Canon. And then uh, a lot of photographers were starting to move to from Epson to Canon around that time as well. HP came up with a new line of printers, which uh, has never really quite um, had the same level of favoritism that the Canons and the Epsons do. And matter of fact, even nowadays, uh, Epson and, and Canon rule the market when it comes to professional quality inkjet prints for your Chiclet prints, um, for prints that uh, portrait photographers, fine art photographers might produce in their, at their studio. And so, uh, again, all of these inks, uh, are the inks uh, that, that we're talking about are water-based inks that are aqueous inks. So uh, that's kind of the story of, of our start. But one of the things that we discovered uh, over time was that even that was not enough. So as we began to grow and we, I guess, I guess you could say we were, were forced to produce at a more, uh, I guess, uh, higher capacity uh, as we were receiving more orders and growing. Uh, we needed, we, we, uh, we knew we needed to be able to, um, uh, handle the workload better. And so we started looking at uh, options. And uh, again, the canvas prints have always been a big part of what we do is what we were based on. So I looked at what the uh, canvas printing companies were, were doing. But I also looked at what the uh, some of the uh, national level, the, the very large uh, photo apps were doing. And I looked at uh, uh, what the commercial uh, printers were, were using. And I discovered that there were three types of inks that, uh, that were being used. Uh, they were latex inks, they, there were solvent inks or eco-solvent, which uh, kind of was just kind of a harsher or less harsh version of the solvent inks. And there was something called UV inks. Now that we're talking the wide format industry, wide format printing, uh, printing you know big prints. So, so I thought, okay, well, what do we do? So we had three options here. We need to be able to produce at a higher capacity, at a higher level. Um, granted, these wouldn't be the same level of prints that we had been using, but they, 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 they would need to be able to fill a certain market that we had where where people in the hotel in the hospitality industry were requiring high volume prints at a lower cost and so uh so for the decor um the, at the for the decor level customer i guess you could say versus the gallery level we had to come up with an option and so we looked at the three and did some research and we decided to go with the uh, the uh, solvent or in this case the eco solvent uh, epson had just come out with a line of of i guess you could call them hybrid signage printers uh, printers that were using components and inks that were originally designed for the signage industry, but they felt that they could perfect them. They could uh, attract the company like us or the uh, the uh, you know large volume photo lab, and uh, and these printers are massive. They're, they're they print the 64 inches wide. Now, one of the things we discovered with these is that these are a very different type of ink. They use a very different type of inks. Now these inks do last. Um, they would, you know, they they don't usually use the term archival, but their their properties are archival. They're, they are they are they they're pigmented 
as well. But rather than water acting as the carrier, it's a solvent. Uh, in this case, uh, Epson used the term eco-solvent to make one sound, I guess, more environmentally friendly. Now, I don't know if they're more environmentally friendly per se, but uh, the fumes are less harsh. Uh, so I guess they're more human friendly, if anything. Um, but uh, uh, one of the things we discovered is that the uh, print quality was really quite good. And we did some comparisons with some of our competitors that were using um, uh, latex inks, which are commonly used in the in the large canvas production companies, uh, canvas printing the latex inks. And we found that the we made the right choice by going with these uh, uh, these solvent inks, so the Epson printer, which was doing solvent printing. So, uh, but. Uh, so that's kind of the story now. Uh, so, but the story continues and it recently changed. Uh, we recently got into the business of working with um, uh, UV inks. Now, so what are UV inks and what are latex inks and what are um, solvent inks, okay? And what are aqueous inks? So that really we have four types of inks here um, that we're talking about. And uh, we already talked about the aqueous, which is really what Finer Work started with. This is what we use to print, the, I would say, well, what we initially produced the majority of our canvases with. We still produce quite a few canvases using the aqueous pigmented inks. Um, we also, but we use the aqueous pigmented inks, uh, and the, it's uh, under the Canon name. Uh, we use those for the uh, all the fine art paper prints, uh, and uh, uh, so it, it's it's primarily for those uh, type of, of prints that we're using those. And uh, the print quality, it's again, it's it's fantastic. It's these are gallery level prints. And it's what you would expect if you're, you know, trying to produce a high-end reproduction of your original artwork or producing, you know, a really fine art photo print. The other option was, is the aqueous, I'm, I'm sorry, the, uh, the uh, solvent or the UV solvent inks. Now the UV, or, I'm sorry, the solvent eco solvent inks. Uh, the solvent inks uh, use a solvent as a carrier versus water. So it's a, technically it's a petroleum based uh, uh, ink. Uh, and those inks are much more durable, but they do not have the color level that the, uh, that the pigmented inks have. Now the pigmented inks have have evolved in the past couple of decades to have just the widest color gamut you can find, but uh, the solvents are still a little bit behind there. Now they've improved. So the, we're on, uh, you know, we now use a different version of that original Epson solvent uh, printer line that we, we started with. Uh, the, the current line of Epson solvent printers are about where our original Epson printer was as far as color gamut, which is, so it's uh, it's fantastic. Great black and whites, a great, you know, uh, tonal range, but it's it's not where our cannons are. Um, but for, you know, the majority of customers that are ordering, say, on the Artisan Archival Canvas, which is what it's used primarily with, uh, it, it's it's great. But it's it's more scratch resistant. It's waterproof. Uh, obviously, you, you know, you're not going to want to set your canvas print out in the rain. But uh, uh, well, we'll say water resistant. Um, it's it's not, but it's you know not going to smudge or smear. Um, we looked at the latex inks, uh, as I I think I mentioned. Uh, it's, they're used commercially uh, quite a bit in the signage industry, and some of the large photo labs have used them for their canvas. I'm not quite sure why they they went that route. 
Uh, some say that they think that the latex inks are more durable. Um, I don't agree with that. Um, I've done some side-by-side -side tests, some scratch tests. Granted, probably not the most scientific, uh, but I really didn't find any anything to to really say. Okay, to, to definitively say that the latex ink print samples that I had were more scratch resistant than what we were getting with our uh, Epson uh, Eco Solvent prints. Uh, definitely more scratch resistant. Both of them more scratch resistant than the. Um, your your typical canvas print, uh, uh, typical uh, pigmented, um, aqueous pigmented ink print. Um, so yes, so they were more durable, better. You know, if you're handling a print and so forth, uh, less likely to damage the print for just casual handling. And then. Uh, uh, the other type of ink out there, as I mentioned, was something called UV curable inks. Now, the uh, problem, one of the problems that we came across with the solvent inks, uh, and I know it's also can be the case with latex inks, is those inks take up can take a while to cure, and there's different methods of doing it. There's uh, some, you know, printers have built-in heaters, uh, ours does, uh, uh, that helps heat the inks so that they cure, you know, almost, you know, within, you know, you know, a handful of seconds of the print, um, or we'll say, you know, 10 to 15 seconds at least, or, or at minimum. Um, but uh, there is a, a system out there that cures a solvent just, uh, a, a solvent type ink uh, immediately. And that is called UV curable inks. Now these UV curable inks are widely used in the signage industry. Uh, they're, uh, and you typically will only see them with very large photo labs or very large fine art print labs. Um, there's not a whole lot out there. Some say we, we're starting to kind of get into that, kind of fall into that uh, uh, area. Uh, I, I don't feel that way, but you know, okay, to each of them. Uh, everyone can have their own opinion on that, I guess. Uh, but you know, we we have grown uh, quite a bit, and we actually have finally brought in our own UV curable printer. Now, in our case. Uh, we're using it in the form of, form of a flatbed printer, which uh, which are these huge printers. I mean, I, we had to, it, it was quite a chore. We had to hire a professional rigging company just to bring in the, uh, the thing. Um, but these, uh, these printers use, these flatbed printers use UV curable inks, which is inks that are cured by LED lights. Um, so if when they're exposed to uh, U, uh, LED uh, UV light source, they harden instantly like that. Now you can, you know, you can tell it how, you know, if you want it to harden all the way or just partially by, by you can, you know, uh, increase or decrease the uh, the, the amount of light that's being applied to things, but you know, when that you know, a hundred percent, they they cure immediately. And so we're we're the reason why we went this route. Uh, we're using it for a very specialized prints, like the dye bond prints, the new dye bond prints, uh, uh, the wood prints, which uh, for uh, a few years we've been using a a local. Uh, print lab. Uh, we've been outsourcing those to the local print lab, but we wanted, we felt that it was necessary to bring that in-house. Um, uh, that that local print lab is basically a sign sign shop um, because uh, these uh, flatbed printers are commonly used, if not by the, you mainly find them in sign shops. 
Um, in this case, we're, we decided to get one that is going to print better quality images than what you typically would, you know, find in a sign shop. But uh, uh, again, these uh, these uh, uh, open the doors for us to provide a lot more options: uh, printing directly to tiles versus using the dye sublimation process. Um, anything from floor graphics to uh, printing on big four by eight foot panels of of, of wood. Uh, and uh, uh, other types of uh, metal substrates, metal panels, I guess you could say, you know, steel. Um, we're, we're, we're exploring all the possibilities. Now, the thing is, these inks lay directly onto the surface. They're cured, and they are just, they're, they're, they're permanent. Uh, they're made for to be able to, you know, hold up in, you know, extreme environments, cold and heat. Um, but one of the things I, I, I learned uh, a few years back is a lot of the, these big photo labs are using these for various types of prints as well. Um, so uh, you're going to see more and more options uh, from Final Works where you can take advantage of printing on rigid substrates. And uh, uh, and really, uh, pretty much the majority of your flatbed printers uh, to print. We want to print on. Let's let, let me kind of back up. We wanted to print on more rigid substrates, and really, the UV curable ink option was our only choice. Um, there was a few choices out there, not real good ones for printing with solvent inks, but. Uh, uh, we felt that the UV curable route was going to be much better because of their durability. And because the UV curable inks, now, granted, this is used primarily in, in the commercial signage industry, the print quality has come a, a long way. Uh, it's come quite a bit. Uh, we've, there's been quite a bit of improvement in the print quality in the past, oh, I guess, five years or so. And so, uh, we're get, we're seeing print quality that that you would expect a a fine art photo print lab to be able to uh, provide when printing on you know um, uh, rigid you know uh, you know I guess you could say when printing on uh, you know high quality poster stock or uh, uh, you know, dye bond, which is uh, becoming more and more popular. So anyway, so that that led us to that. Now, uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about um, uh, was the dye sublimation inks. Now we use those for specific types of products. Now those are a dye based inks, a dye based ink, um, but they're applied in a different fashion you know all these uh, other types of uh, inks are applied directly by um, by the equipment they, the, the image is uh, printed direct to the surface with dye based uh, or dye sublimation inks uh, the image is not printed direct to the surface um, let's take for example our typical metal print uh, typical metal print utilizes a dye sublimation process. The image is printed uh, in reverse, mirrored to a special transfer paper. That transfer paper, and that, that, is, that is all the, that's where the printing is done. That image is then uh, applied to the surface of that metal panel, or it could be a coffee mug or a mouse pad. Uh, I have a dye subprint here. I don't know if y'all can see it. Can y'all see this? Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is a dye subprint from one of our sample kits. So this image was originally printed to the surface of a, to, uh, of a paper, directly to the paper. It was then with heat, okay, and pressure, 
that transfer paper uh, face down placed on that on that uh, panel over a period, I guess, uh, I don't remember the exact time frame, but I think it's a minute and a half or two, something like that. Um, it's then released and the paper is peeled away and uh, and you get the image um, impressed upon the uh, panel. Now that's caused by the heat, uh, uh, it, the heat is converting the, the dyes on that transfer paper to a gas. That gas is then fusing to enamel-like coating um, on that, on the surface of that, of that metal. And so that's the dye sublimation process, but it's a special dye-based ink. Now, there's also been a resurgence in dye-based inks recently um, for just regular inkjet printing. Uh, and you see it more, in, you're starting to see it in the, in the major photo labs, but you're, you, it was first kind of, I guess you could say, uh, started to become mainstream with like your Costco photo labs. And I, I even heard that Costco was doing away with their photo labs. I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if that's true or not, but I'm, I'm be curious, if, uh, I wonder why, but uh, uh, your drugstore photo labs, like your CVS, uh, Rite Aid, Walgreens, uh, so forth, they're using these, uh, uh, I guess you could say commercial level uh, uh, dye-based inkjet printers uh, to print your Kodak prints or that you get there. And so uh, as our demand uh, at Find the Works, and these you know, going back a few years, as our demand uh, for our Kodak prints become greater, became greater and greater, we started to look at doing that as well. Um, we were all already offering the Kodak prints, the C prints, which are chemical based, which it's, it's not ink, no ink is used. Um, but uh, in order to stay, I guess you could say mainstream and to, uh, uh, I, I guess uh, we, we just wanted to have a little bit better control on the uh, output and more consistency. Uh, we decided to go the route of the uh, commercial level um, dye-based photo printers uh, to do your you know four by fives five by sevens and like I said that's become more mainstream um, the print quality uh, is incredible and they are uh, actually archival as well now um, I'm not exactly sure but uh, companies like Epson and Fuji uh, are uh, they that produce these printers uh, uh, they've come up with an archival level dye-based ink. So these Kodak prints are, so, are these Fuji prints that are printed this way are supposed to be last longer than your tra more traditional Kodak print that are produced via chemicals. So um, that is basically um, the, you know, what we use to print. Now there's, there's a few other things. That, well, I guess the only other thing out there that we use to print with is our toner-based prints, which are our digital press, uh, which we use for things like uh, folded greeting cards and so forth, uh, flat cards, folded cards, and uh, postcards. And so uh, that kind of covers what, the, you know, the inks we use. And uh, I guess I want, now I'm going to take any questions that I, and I know there are some questions here because you've been uh, yeah. making, take it, getting notes and jotting them down. Yeah, and, um, I guess, you know, because- uh, and, and do you mind if I take a quick time out to get some water? Sure, go I'm, ahead. I'm losing my voice here. Okay, <laughs> no okay. Problem. We'll oh. do a quick act. Okay, okay. I, I, I'm going to, uh, uh, I guess I should, do I need to turn this back over to you? Well, uh, go ahead and uh, leave it open. Let me, uh, yeah, go ahead and turn it over to you then. Okay. Let me do this and then.
Sorry, Melissa, you're muted. Okay, I think y'all should be able to hear me a little bit better now here. Um, let me see about James on there. Let me just share my, we were talking about um, the die sub that we do here. Um, and we've had that, I wanna say almost four years now, James, that we've been doing the dice up? Uh, actually, not, no, it's been... It's been less. I'm, I'm going back through our Instagram and... Yeah, um, probably this is, years at most. Yeah, the, there's a, our old carrier with the mugs. So the mugs right here, as he was talking about, our dice sub. And um, our dice sub department, um, I think we have a, probably some metal being transferred on here. But if you go back, then you can actually see some of those uh being done uh, we did a video of, actually too of uh when we first got the, the mug machine in and transferring so we have some great video that i'll link up here later um and i actually uh, think um yeah. i think the current video you have um i i think yeah that so on our home page we actually if um we, we put a little bit of a uh we're just ha having fun putting together some just some footage of you know typical day at the office sort of thing um where you can uh oh no i think that's the frame but just our home page go to our home page you can actually see oh okay. yeah i don't know how well it would pop up out here and you you had a no that no if you go to the just the home page just finerworks.com oh, okay. yeah it's not on youtube oh, okay. um but we uh, it, we'll we'll put it up there eventually. But it just shows some uh, behind the scenes footage uh, uh, somewhere along in this video where uh, uh, and I'm I guess you're not sharing your screen, your screen are you? Yes, I am. Oh, okay. Um, uh, where you, and, and those are inkjet prints using the uh, uh, the. Uh, uh, pigmented aqueous pigmented inks um, but uh, uh, the dye inks uh, will show you uh, what we're printing on the transfer paper and I think I was able to get Brian I was able to get him to agree to uh, 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 do the dye sub process I actually it did it in uh, two different shoots I think um, capture some of that video that that's we're just again those are just your typical fine art print on the uh uv printer and again you saw that we were using the canon printers um you might speak up just a little louder because i think it's going to be picking up from my mic rather okay. than your mic all right uh i got some questions that um i'll go ahead and ask you so, yeah i think so um, I'll, I'll point out when those when we see the we see them on the, there the, the, uh, the dice, the dice sub. But, um, just ink technology uh, as a whole is it corresponding with basically printer technology as printers change the ink technology change or has the ink technology kind of just stayed the same pretty much with very little change as as uh, machinery for printers has. Uh, has grown and, and improved. So the evolution of, uh, oh, here, here we go. We're seeing some of the, uh, uh, are you still sh screen sharing? Yeah, okay. it's just uh, 
So this is uh, just prepping some metal for mm -hmm. printing, and uh, and I'm, I'll get to the question in just one. Yeah, to be able and that's to a print you're this. seeing in reverse um, yeah, the, on the, the side. And he's laying it down face down, mm -hmm. and then uh, uh, taping it down. Taping it down, taping the transfer paper down. And then after he does that, he puts it in the heat press. Um, probably should have sped that. There we go. Well, he put it in the heat press. Now he's taking it out. We call it cooking it, uh, kind of like putting it in the oven or on a grill. And there you go. The image is, and you can see that this image kind of faded still. There's a little bit of ink left over on that transfer paper. Oh, and this is the. Uh, this is a uh, example of the UV curable printing that we do. We're printing on a bunch of wood prints. But anyway, so uh, going back to your question, uh, if you want to stop sharing the screen, uh, you know, let me get that. The rest is other aspects of framing and stuff, and uh, uh, not as cool. Not as cool. It's all the other stuff. Actually, we some do. people think it's more cool, but. <laughs> uh, but that's not what we're talking about today. So anyway, uh, so uh, yeah, so the generally you're not seeing a whole lot of innovation in uh, in the inks right now. Um, what you're seeing are uh, uh, you're seeing companies like Epson, HP, and, and not even as much HP, but Epson and Canon. They're, they're constantly, constantly coming out, out with improvements, improvements within utilizing the existing mainstream, mainstream ink technology, ink technology which is uh, within the, the pigment, pigment ink realm. Okay, okay, so uh, so you're, but, but that's, that's really where you're, where you're seeing, seeing most of the innovation. innovation. It doesn't, it doesn't have, have there's not a, a big, big there, there's some some tweaks with the ink, ink they say that you know might extend the the lifespan of the ink by you know a few years, but we're already talking about inks that are rated for 100 to 200 years. So, you know, I, is that a big selling point, or is that more of a marketing point for them than anything? Probably. Uh, but uh, the innovation we're seeing more is with you know the speed of the printers, uh, the uh, in some cases the formulation of things, adding more colors to get a wider color gamut. Uh, they're always seeking that, that kind of that, almost that, that, that op, that, that ultimate level of color gamut, which no one really knows what it is, you know. Every time they able to, you know, they come up with a new generation of inks with Chav, just a little bit of improvement to them. They're saying, oh, we've reached that that peak of color gamut, but then they're always trying to outdo that. So um, anyway, but uh, you're, you know. So it would be like peaks of gamut and I'm guessing archival. Yeah, the you know, archival thing I think has gotten. Lasting. Yeah, it's become more, again, of a marketing thing, but trying to get a little bit more out of those tones. Mm -hmm. uh, also, where yeah, I haven't seen a whole lot of innovation uh, in the inks is on the pigmented line is in durability. Um, um, they're still, you know, obviously, well, they're more durable than their uh, their predecessor, which were dye based, but um, for casual handling. But uh, they're not uh, again. They're they're not quite as scratch resistant as I would like um them to be um and that you know like these uh, solvent inks are um so i i'm a little you know surprised that there hasn't been a whole lot of innovation from one of the three brands the, the main brands like uh, hp uh canon and epson in, in that area um uh audio sounds like we're in an echo chamber so probably while i'm yeah, yeah, because you're yeah, echoed because it's trying to yeah, pick you. Yeah, because we're in the same it. room, folks. Yeah, well, Sorry. I'm also farther from you, and the mic is catching your voice from my computer. Yeah, Let me so see if I go move over there. Maybe if you unmute while I'm talking, that might help. Um, I need to give you back host, actually. Because if I in, if I mute myself, it mutes us on, uh, oh, on YouTube. Okay. So let me do that. Okay. Um, and what I may do is just move closer over there. 
yeah, where we're across from each other. So yeah, yeah we're, we we're having to kind of uh, relearn our, our setup because uh, I used to be at home doing it. So, <laughs> yeah. so um, I'll let you give a little bit of a lobby tour here. And I'm muted and now you should Okay, see. so that should, sorry about that, uh, Carrie. I know, know that can be kind of annoying and distracting. Um, anyway, like I've seen, uh, yeah, lack of innovation and in the, uh, on the, uh, on that side has been uh, kind of uh, what, what uh, has been a little disappointing. When it comes to the solvent ink, the eco solvent inks. Um, I don't know if the innovation really is so much with the the inks themselves, or if it's with the printers. Um, when we first started printing uh, with solvent inks, we utilized an Epson printer. It was a seventy. I, I can't remember the model. Um, and when it worked, when that model worked, it worked great. Uh, but it was a very unreliable printer. Uh, we now we used it quite a bit, um, but uh, uh, Epson's next generation was the S80 something. I'd have to go back and look at it. But uh, that generation of printer, which is what we're currently using, I think it's the the. Uh, uh, current generation that Epson offers, um, uh, the color gamut was a little bit better um, uh, and the printer was more, but the printer was much more reliable. So most of the innovation was with the hardware and again, not so much the inks themselves. No. Now, again, thinking, going on to cost of, of inks, um, I find we get a lot of customers that uh, end up wanting to go ahead and come to a commercial printer after trying to do this at home. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, there's a lot of issues they run into with the inks. The inks clog up the heads uh, at home, the maintenance that goes in because, again, and then the inks that are, they, they, you can only do so many prints. I, I think mm -hmm. it's like 500 prints maybe um, on, a, on the smaller printers. Yeah, like well, a, a, uh, yeah. 16 by 20. So uh, the, the, the printers have a, uh, all printers have a lifespan. Um, there's a set number of impressions that they, they, can, they can do. Um, now, uh, there's not, and when, when I say each printer has it, it it's, it's, it's not like they're all set to 500 or they're all set to, you know, 1,000. It's just they're, there are certain uh, non-replaceable parts that are going to, to generally wear out, okay, making that printer unusable within a certain range, within a common range. So uh, uh, one of the uh, uh, art, well, let, let's, let's, you, let's explain to you this way. Uh, we use the Canon Pro line, the, I think it's the Canon Pro 4100 uh, commonly. We, we have, I think we have eight or nine of them. I, I, I don't even remember how many we have right now of those. Uh, uh, and uh, typically they last us about two years. Uh, after about two years of constant use, now these are commercial level or high end uh, quality photo printers mm -hmm. uh, that are used uh, quite a bit in the fine art industry as well. Uh, uh, but after about two years of constant use, uh, and it seems they all kind of at, at within close to that two year range, uh, they go kaput and they 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 have parts that have just no longer, you know, it's it, there. It's more expensive for us to replace the part than it is just to buy a new one. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, the we had an Epson uh, model that we used to use quite a bit, the Epson ninety eight eighty. 
it didn't get as much use uh, that the cannons get nowadays. Uh, but eventually that reached a point where that, uh, you know, parts started to fail on that. That's they're kind of like uh, people, you know, <laughs> we get to a certain age and parts start to, you know, fall off. Uh, uh, <laughs> parts stop working and, uh, you know, just so printers are kind of the same way. Uh, average lifespan of a human is what, 70 years, 75 years, something like that. And so printers, uh, each model has their, their own kind of lifespan, you could say that that's an average. So it's not like it's set at a certain number, mm -hmm. but after a certain amount of usage, they, they tend to fall apart. So, you know, just cost effective it's more cost effective on a commercial use and i mean yeah. commercial desk is we're doing the volume of printing what, what? and where somebody who like i said they purchase their own jacquet printer they try to run it at home and let's say they're maybe doing 20 prints uh that are at the max maybe like a 16 by 20 or 11 by 14s in a month and the ink sits there for a while then they again heads get clogged they re try to do this again the the amount of money you're going to invest personally at home to print is going to be more astronomical than if you were to go to a like a printer like yeah, us sure. where, and have us print it um, because there's those are the side costs to yeah. the maintenance and the ink costs. Uh, um, I will say this. Uh, um, one of the things that uh, uh, a common uh, uh, scenario that would pop up would be a uh, uh, photographer uh, would buy their own uh, wide format printer mm -hmm. uh, or an artist would. And they would say, hey, you know, I, I think I can save money by by doing this myself. And uh, they can under one condition that they are printing at the volume that that printer needs to make for it to make sense. If a if these printers are, do not get constant use, or I shouldn't say constant use, if they do not get consistent and frequent use, uh, things can uh, go bad. Um, uh, ink dries on the print heads, the nozzles that that. Um, where the nozzles are located that spray ink onto the surface of the paper or canvas. Um, that can be very difficult to clean off after a certain point. Uh, the, uh, the lines get clogged and they, uh, the ink hardens in the lines. Uh, so uh, just uh, all, it's, it's a lot of it has to do though with uh, getting you know, the printer to function at optimal levels. And if they're not getting the the regular usage that they need, then that can pose a problem, mm -hmm. and uh, people end up wasting a lot of ink because they have to, uh, you know, switch out certain parts that are no longer usable. Yeah. You know, the the Canon printers, for instance. So the Canons, you know, we frequently have to replace the print heads mm -hmm. uh, and that they're that's the nature that they're, they're meant to and uses up a lot of ink yep. um, and uh, most uh, individuals aren't able to get inks these inks at the same cost mm -hmm. that uh, that companies like us them. where we're buying these in huge you know bulk uh, you know and so um, and then there's issues with the media as well, mm -hmm. when um, because uh, when you uh, you know you're going to spend for let's say one of these Epson or Canon printers, you're going to uh, ink costs alone to fill these up with ink is going to be you know anywhere from twelve hundred to fifteen hundred dollars mm -hmm. in all likelihood. Uh, uh, and I may be off by a little bit, but it's going to be in excess of a thousand dollars, easily in excess of twelve hundred dollars, to fill these printers up. Uh, and these cartridges go for between two and three hundred dollars each each color, uh, and they're going to have you know ten cartridges, you know different uh, colors of ink. Uh, 
uh, used under different conditions, uh, you know, like different blacks used for, you know, for matte surfaces, a different black used for a glossy surface. And so, uh, so uh, you're going to have a lot of, it's going to take a while to make back uh, what you spent mm -hmm. uh, unless they're getting lots of use. Is there a huge difference? Um, we were talking about the gamuts and stuff with the inks. So a person who buys a desktop Epson, they want to print their art on there. And I mean, I'm talking about the office ones because this is what I've seen some mm -hmm. artists do. And they have the CMYK, mm -hmm. those four cards. And you look at ours where we have, you know, this whole, like you said, 10 cartridges yeah. on there. Does that mean our printers with those 10 cartridges, we're going to be able to get more, you know, colors out of it versus somebody trying to print this at home with the with the four, four colors yeah uh generally yes okay um and that's be, uh what uh companies like epson and and uh, canon have done and hp is they've come up with uh carefully formulated uh uh additional colors now uh in printing cmyk is that for you know is really kind of the the what all printers use uh cyan magenta uh yeah. yellow and black uh but uh now what you commonly find in these uh larger printer and even some of these small desktop uh, call them you know semi-professional level inkjet desktop printers is they they they'll have red and blue mm -hmm. and uh and maybe even rent uh, additional options such as um like a matte black and um and a photo black or a uh uh, uh i think we even have i don't remember if it's the can i don't remember which print which model it is but i think there's a purple in there somewhere and there's a gray i think it's a canon I have to go back and check on the purple, but I know there is a gray. There's actually several shades of the gray. Um, so, um, so that uh, now gray is a version of black, and the blue is a version of the magenta, I believe, and the red is a version of the uh, of the uh, mag magenta. magenta yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, and blue of cyan, yeah. Yeah, yeah blue is the version of the cyan. Okay, so um, where have I seen purple? I've seen purple somewhere. I'm trying to remember <laughs> where, which of our models uses purple. Anyway, okay. Don't know. It's on one of your shirts and you're walking away. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, so uh, um, but anyway, uh, but those have been very carefully formulated versions. And so the, and the printer is able to take advantage of those additional tones that I guess that the uh, light cyan and the, uh, I'm sorry, that the uh, regular cyan and magenta don't get. And then there's also light cyan and light magenta. Mm -hmm. So it's to try to expand the color gamut. Matter of fact, uh, and also improve the gradation in colors. Uh, our UV flatbed printer, you know, mm -hmm. has a light cyan and light mm -hmm. magenta option, which mm -hmm. is kind of unusual in that type of printing but because of the type of printing we're using it that that option is available to us yeah. it also has a white yeah um which uh and those were larger ink cartridges than well, our yeah those right? are actually those are bottles, yeah, bottles yeah it was leader yeah. bottles yeah so they were pretty big um, um but yeah so uh uh so it really these the printers that we use versus what you might find a lot of artists trying to do at home are going to have a uh generally a wider range of colors now and some like i said again some of these uh uh semi-professional desktop printers have have access to these colors as well um but the key is uh to economize that is not to have these combined into one cartridge mm -hmm. but for the for there to be, be, be a uh, color, a cartridge for each unique color. Mm -hmm. Because if you're using an inkjet printer with a cartridge, you know, just of all of those four primary colors, 
uh, one of those colors runs out, suddenly you can't use yep. your inkjet printer anymore or your all your prints look. If, if it does let you print, they're, they're going to look, everything's going to look kind of weird. Yeah, it gets like a weird hue to it. Yeah, weird hue. Because <laughs> it's not, maybe that needs yellow, but you're out of yellow, so it's not printing anything. Yeah, uh, yeah it's like a, it's a, a balance. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you yeah. almost have to have all the cartridges in there. Speaking of people, like I said, that, that try to do their art economically, doing things like that. Um, what is the difference with you know, the ink prints and laser prints on paper. I mean, I remember in the 90s, there was a big kick where people would go to Kinko's mm -hmm. and were doing art prints on the laser, laser paper, and it had that shine to yeah, it kind yeah. of thing there. Um, and to this day, it's kind of funny. I still will see somebody bust out a laser print, art print, and I'm like, wow, no, it doesn't, it doesn't have that look, but um, it is, does laser print have anything up on ink? Or why, why choose ink over laser prints? Like, did laser just never come into technology? Uh, laser is 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 uh, generally limited in its gamut, and mm -hmm. now it, it's in some ways it reminds me of the uh, the uh, UV technology. Um, but it's it's different now with the laser printers. What's what's happening is a uh, a uh, the cartridges aren't holding a liquid; they're actually holding a more like a a solid. Mm -hmm. And uh, the drums are applying that solid to the surface, which is kind of turning it almost into like a powder, mm -hmm. and as a uh, a light source like an LED light or a laser is hardening that that substance onto the surface. Mm -hmm. uh, it just it doesn't have the the uh, the color capability. Yeah, it okay. So it's it's just not uh, you know when you print a folded card uh, and th there's some other things relating to that just the, in general technology uh, that doesn't allow for the consistency. But uh, uh, or makes getting, getting a consistency harder. But um, but if you print an image, uh, let's say um, uh, you know, let, let, hand me hand me that right there. So this image here is printed on a uh, uh, it was on our on a uh, linen cardstock. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then we just mounted it to some foam core, um, just just for fun. It's not what we offer on our website. But if we were to print this image on, let's say, our linen fine art paper, the, the new linen fine art paper that we have, the color gamut would be much richer, be much more accurate, much closer to what the artist intended. Mm -hmm. um, so. Uh, and it's because with the inkjet technology, it just has the ability to uh, print a wider range of color. Yeah, and I guess mean, that, that's one thing, I think, going with printers. Like, it's there, like when you reach your art game. Yeah, the, to the, a level. even, you know, I said there hasn't been much in the way of innovation in the inks lately. Mm -hmm. There was some major innovation uh, in the. Uh, what the inks could produce, um, say, say roughly maybe uh, eight to ten years ago, and uh, we haven't seen that kind. And of, with the toner-based prints, the laser prints, and so forth, there's really been nothing uh, earth-shattering uh, in the past couple decades, mm -hmm. and so uh, so all the advancements, you know, with inkjet. And I, and I know some photographers, professional photographers, will want to debate this, and uh, and I won't debate them because I, I, no matter what I say, I can't convince them. <laughs> but uh, I'll, I'll I'll say this: in my opinion, uh, when it comes to color gamut and color accuracy, uh, the inkjet by far is superior than anything out there. Okay, uh, some people will say so there's traditional darkroom methods, which are, are going to be more accurate and say, okay, 
you know, uh, I, again, I can't debate you. Uh, and that's going to be based upon your opinion, yeah. developing your own work <laughs> in most cases. But uh, yeah, inkjet has become, has come such a long way uh, in the, you know, well, yeah, and I mean, like, the way I see it, I used to be darkroom uh, yeah. person is that with printing an inkjet, there's a consistency I'm going to get in yeah. that coloring, where, um, you know, with darkroom, it, it, it's a skill set, you know, you have to get to that certain skill where you're going to produce, yeah. you know, well, it, it's well, like anybody with the best. Well, I'll tell you what, knowing I, their, knowing yeah, their stuff. let me put it this way, I'm not basing my statement on my experience mm -hmm. i'm basing it on what professional photographers tell me yeah that the that uh that uh the inkjet technology because i, I never you know sat in a dark room developing yeah. photos but, but they it, it but the even, photographers tell me yeah but you would have variation most, most of the photographers kind of yeah. tell me said hey yeah i get you know that i'm talking about ones that print you know their own yeah. prints at home say I get much better prints now than I ever did, mm -hmm. you know, when I, you know, were printing, you know, the C prints and yeah. black and, and white. Yes, yeah. maybe. But I, I think no, color, black and white. I, I think color black and white are, really yeah. with the temperatures on the color, like Fuji paper always tended to go more magenta. And yeah. I would have to like color correct on stuff if yeah. I was going to run it through a machine. And then if I was going to the dark room, again, it would be on my well, temperature. I, again, I, I think that, you know, in, with uh, with uh, inkjet, it, it, it's not as influenced by, by, yeah, that's by the environment, by exactly. barometric uh, pressure, temperature, and, things like that. The machines that run the, the uh, chemical prints, the C prints, as I like mm -hmm. to call them, uh, they can be very kind of uh, what's the word uh, uh, finicky. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, they, they don't like changes in in temperature. They don't yeah. like changes in in the humidity levels, mm -hmm. things like that. So your mix has you, to be exact. yeah. So you get <laughs> uh, it's easy to get to for there to be a lack of consistency, mm -hmm. even though they utilize a digital printing method to send the data to the printer to produce those prints. Yeah. There's, uh, it, it can be uh, difficult to get consistency at times. Yeah. With today's inkjet printer, whether it be UV, curable, uh, solvent, pigmented, uh, aqueous pigmented, or dye, okay, uh, they're not as susceptible to some of those external influences. And now, another question we were talking about earlier is like, do the inks, cause like um, a color variation when they're going from machine to machine. Like if you have a uh, small four by sixes that are gonna be printed on a, a smaller uh, printer versus a 16 by 20, you know, you're using Epson printers and you're using their inks. Is there gonna be variation still from a print that comes off of a small format printer and that even though uh... It, it some of that's going to depend upon the uh, color profiles being utilized, but let's say they're both utilizing optimal color profiles. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, you know, color profile designed specifically for that paper, um, and they're really good profiles. And you know, the the, the small printer, mm -hmm. um, desktop printer, if it's if it's one, like I said, some one of these semi-professional, or they sometimes use the word prosumer mm -hmm. versions, then uh, a lot of times these are smaller versions or smaller cousins of the larger ones. Mm -hmm. They're almost exactly the same in every respect, except that they're smaller. They're, uh, they're not able to, they don't have some of the, they're not as fast. They don't, uh, aren't able to Print maybe on rolls, um, they're only sheet fed, uh, but they're using the same inks. Mm -hmm. um, they're using the uh, the uh, uh, the same pigmented inks. They're probably produced in the same big vats wherever. Okay, mm -hmm. but they're putting smaller cartridges. Mm -hmm. So yes, you can get the same quality uh, uh, printing mm -hmm. potentially as they as their larger color, uh, cousins are producing. Uh, 
but the uh, one of the things you have to look at though is your cost per print mm -hmm. is going to be much higher mm -hmm. um, because uh, you're able, you know, cost per cost per milliliter or cost per cc, let's say cubic centimeter of ink is going to be much less in those larger format versions. So uh, they may use the same amount of ink to produce the same size print even, mm -hmm. you know, may, let's use an eight by 10 because these wide format machines are able to produce an eight by 10 mm -hmm. print on the, of course on the whole roll, but the amount of ink used might be exactly the same, mm -hmm. but it's going to be a lot cheaper, uh, a lot cheaper on that, on their, on the bigger machine. Yeah. Um, I think I'm sorry, I had one other question on here I to ask before I get to ending questions. Oh, longevity of the inks. You were talking kind of uh, about uh, when we, especially with archival, when we talk about archival ink as, as one of our selling points for artists that are selling their prints, how long are the, the inks that we use for our paper media? We kind of have, we have it on our website that, you know, they're, yeah. they're archival, but how many years are we looking at? Like we were talking? Yeah, you know, it, uh, it, people have to understand when we talk about archival prints, and I'm, I'm not saying we at Fine Works, I'm talking about the industry in general, is I don't want to say uh, take it with a certain amount of uh, or a certain level of uh, or grain of salt. Um, but I, I want people to understand that when these uh, announcements are made by Epson or Canon or anything. They're saying so that that they're saying that these your your print will last you know 100 years or 200 years based upon optimal conditions. That it, and I, I I laugh because it's basically saying yeah if you keep your print in a dark room and it, and never expose it to light yeah it's going to last mm -hmm. that long. So uh, but for let, let's but uh, under realistic circumstances there's no reason why that print should not you know under your typical you know you know average home average room uh uh remain in um in an unfaded unaltered state for 50 years okay mm -hmm. um uh, they they say that they they i remember i reading some Thing where they did some side-by-side -side test with uh, uh, a, a print on a Canon printer using the Canon Lucia inks, pigmented inks versus the Ultra Chrome Epson Ultra Chrome inks, and the you know the consensus was hands down the Canon uh, printer won because their inks lasted two years longer than the uh, <laughs> Epson inks, and then but in other words and then what they said and then when you read the article it said that the uh the uh epson inks lasted uh, like 190 years mm -hmm. whereas that canon inks lasted 192 Two years, years. Yeah. I, you know who cares really yeah I you know, know. uh uh <laughs> and I, so it's it's you, you really you know it's it's kind of funny but really what the key is not so much the inks but what the paper is being printed to because you can use the most uh, you can use the superior uh, Canon inks, or you can use the inferior uh, Epson inks. Yeah. You know, which you know, it's which they're basically on par. The, to tell you the truth, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, but if neither one of them are printed on an archival paper, material, yeah. it's not you know, paper. Matter. Yeah, it's the the, the print's well, going to deteriorate. And so it's a good thing they're paired well. It's archival. It's so, pairing it with archival. So it, and we did a whole thing with uh, uh with a guest host uh, mm -hmm. uh that you can go back on youtube and watch mm -hmm. where we talked about paper and mm -hmm. talked about archival paper so really uh, when it comes to the the inks uh well uh they are archival but we have to make sure we're using uh uh when we're talking about the pigmented inks they are they are archival but we have to just make sure we're using archival based papers with them so how are the uv inks sparing in longevity you know you were talking about them being a little longer than 
uh, was it the latex inks that well, they, they're, I, I should say this is uh, they are much more durable. These, mm -hmm. these are inks that are made for outdoors. Mm -hmm. You know, the, these are the inks that are used on billboards. Mm -hmm. So, uh, 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 and there's many different companies that produce these type of inks, many different versions and so forth. Uh, what the ones we are using tend to be more uh, use that UV technology mm -hmm. and UV ink system, uh, but for a little bit higher level prints, uh, and that that's where we we that's why we're going to be getting into the texture prints where there, we'll be able to print your painting and not only print the the artwork itself, but print the raised brush strokes, mm -hmm. you know, because we're able, we'll be able to print in levels. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Epson is coming out, or is it Canon? Epson, I, I can't remember which. Epson or Canon is coming out with a gel-based uh, uh, printer, which uh, flatbed printer, which is basically the same thing as what, what we just set up. Um, uh, they, I don't know. It is kind of like a gel that we, that we we were printing. They're just using the term gel. Um, we call it two and a half D printing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, now, granted that the color level, the color gamut, is not what you're going to be able to get. You, you are you're going to sacrifice when you go from uh, aqueous pigmented inks like mm -hmm. what our Canon printers uh, uh, and go to the solvent eco solvent inks that our Epson line produces, there's going to be a step down in color gamut and, and color level. Mm -hmm. There's going to be another step down when you go to UV, regardless of how good those UV inks are. Mm -hmm. So there is a there is a gap, okay? Mm -hmm. But you when you step down in print quality, you're going to step up and durability and be able to withstand casual handling. Mm -hmm. As far as light fastness, uh, uh, not fading, I don't think there's much in the much difference there. Again, it's, I think that's going to depend upon more of the media that is being printed. Now, if you stay, take a step back and go back into the dye based era, with the exception of these new photo printers that are now using dye, dye based things. Uh, then uh, you could print on archival media, but the inks themselves will, the dyes will start to deteriorate, break down. So, and that's why those are not really used anymore mm -hmm. in the industry, except with the newer dye based inks that are used in the uh, photo industry, uh, which are archival, matter of fact, so archival, they're with new dye-based Kodak prints, mm -hmm. like our Kodak professional prints, are considered, uh, according to the people that make this, that manufacture the materials and inks and stuff, are uh, and like Kodak and uh, Fuji. They're supposed to be more archival than the Kodak Endura prints. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, you know, <laughs> anyway. Um, so. uh, that, that question came from one of our customers, um, uh, Scott and Chuck with Wayne Addington Images, because they are on GeoGalleries, but they also do variation. Mm -hmm. And again, when we get into the conversation of diversifying your art, mm -hmm. there's a lot of artists that want to license their work uh, to commercial businesses. And so signage is something they're looking the, at, but at, at the same that, time, this looking is, at the colors. Yeah, one of the things, uh, like if you uh, go into a <clears throat> Excuse me. If you go into a a, a uh, like a car dealership, a lot of times you'll find these big, huge like they might be canvas prints or they might mm -hmm. be big prints on uh, die bond or gated board hard mm -hmm. rigid materials. Uh, a lot, you know, they they look really cool, real, really pretty, and so a lot of artists want to get into those kind of mm -hmm. get that kind of placement, or a lot of photographers do, and so they they it's into these high traffic areas mm -hmm. where uh people are going to be touching the prints mm -hmm. but the businesses don't want to spend an arm and a leg on picture mm -hmm. frames they want it, something that they can easily hang on the wall and kind of a modern look mm -hmm. that 
that's going to withstand being touched, you know, and banged into and so forth. Mm -hmm. And so that's where we get into these, uh, this, you know, large UV flatbed printers mm -hmm. uh, UV using these UV curable inks. Yeah, the inks, uh, the colors, again, like I said, you we're taking that step down, mm -hmm. like we, we said we did on uh, uh, those, but the durability allows them, those prints to be produced for those type of, that type of scenario where, where an artist is trying to get their work uh, into a high traffic area or it's being printed as a wall mural type, mm -hmm. type scenario. Yeah. Exactly. So, uh, and you really, that is the route you, you want to go. You, 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 there are ways you can print this stuff and produce this on the PIB, uh, using the pigment and inks and yeah, the image is going to look a little bit better, uh, but it's not going to last, uh, not because it's going to fade, but because just the conditions it's exposed to on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. So great. I hope that answers, uh, Scott and Chuck, I hope it answers your question. If not, give us a, a message and uh, we'll elaborate uh, if you need some more information on that. Um, anything else? I mean, what do you see future-wise, I guess, with our new printer? What kind of materials do you Well, wanna... like I said, dye bond is a uh, uh, becoming kind of a big thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, now, dye bond is a, it's similar to the metal prints, but it's printed directly to uh, the surface. Dye bond has very, two very thin sheets of aluminum uh, with uh, that sandwich, a kind of a polyethylene, uh, almost like a plastic mm -hmm. uh, core. Uh, very rigid, very durable, a little bit thicker than your our, your typical metal print. It doesn't have that quite the same I guess, you know, sleekness. Mm -hmm. But if you want a, a nice looking print in that high traffic area, that, that that's a, uh, probably one of the better ways to go. Um, uh, the metal, the dye sublimation process also has some advantages in that where uh, they could also be positioned in a high traffic area. Um, they're fairly scratch resistant. Um, um and but the consistency and colors is not quite there to the at that level yeah. well it is uh just a little after eight here and you didn't think we'd go that long yeah i was, I was <laughs> like yeah i was uh there's always a lot of questions um, with with anything on here um well we, we really hadn't gotten to talk about our next month, but um, I'm thinking we might make look at booth sales and just things that um, we're getting back to a lot more in-person uh, events now. Uh, several print shows are opening up here in mm -hmm. San Antonio and photography shows that are going to be in person. Um, we hear a lot of people uh, going on Zap application, getting ready for stuff. So maybe uh, next month, if I guess we could either talk about different booth sales, uh, yeah, I, I, I can, I, I've been doing it for about seven yeah, years. I, 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 yeah, I would like to uh, talk about um, next month. May, and probably won't be me doing the talking, but I'd like to see if we could bring in some artists to maybe yeah, there's uh, a, you know there's a talk, few talk there. about what what the experience is like. Yeah. If uh, maybe uh, if you're new, you're thinking about uh, selling your work in in a uh, in a pop up festival or an art festival, and you know how to kind of get prepared and yeah. uh, to sell your work in those locations. Yeah, you know, talking what, about these selling points. Again, we went over know, the inks yeah. and stuff and we have our paper media. So if you guys watch those, that helps you again, learn some uh, uh, of the points to give the value to your fine art prints. Uh, it's people ooh and all over the originals. And I mean, like I said, I've sold uh, canvas prints, which are clay canvas prints where I've actually had to tell people this is not the original. So, you know, when they start ooing and aahing over your prints, um, it's great. You have those little selling points. Uh, and we want to help you guys get set up for that summer season of, of shows that are coming back. Uh, so we'll go ahead and do that topic. And um, like I said, I've, I've sold prints uh, from booths to inside a gallery. Um, and, and there's a lot of different talking points and, and things you can do to kind of push that sale over you know uh, and and even when you run out of prints that's a great thing about print on demand you can get it kind of a still make that sale after 
of yeah. the, the show. So that's hopefully good. we'll do that for July. And uh, is there anything else, James, that you no, wanted to I, have? I think that, I think that's good. Um, I think we, uh, if anyone has any questions relating to this, uh, send us an email. Uh, you can do at Melissa at Finer Works or Finer, yeah, Melissa at FinerWorks.com. If you're watching on YouTube, uh, you can go ahead and hit in the comments. And like I said, YouTube normally will give me a notification um, or I try to check it every once in a while if they're going to spam. So we will we will get to you on those questions. Yeah. Thanks a lot, guys, for joining us. Um, and we'll see you next month. And right. uh, don't forget, Thursday, uh, we have oh, Thursday, yeah, yes, this Thursday, uh, this Thursday yeah. we have uh, Jim Landers uh, doing low light photography. Oh, yeah, that's so a, if, if, if you if you have any any inclination to get into photography or you're in photography, uh, uh, it's a great, great class because yeah. uh, uh, frequently you, you're, you'll find yourself in a situation where you're trying to capture an image, but the lighting is terrible. Yeah. But just because the lighting is, is bad does not mean you can get you can't get a good photo. Yeah. And so uh, he's going to tell you why that's possible and, and how to do it. Too. Yeah, artists, I tell you, it's yeah. a good it's good to have it because a lot of artists now are taking photos for their source image to create their or to of. get for, for you know to get ideas for subject matter yeah. they, they might be you know just randomly you know trying to you know just see something and then try to get that photo and they yeah. look at that photo and they say yeah it's like not quite what and, and yeah. it could be that and you, you know, couldn't see the details yeah, you know yeah. um so definitely just you know artists or photographer these topics on photo tips monthly are always uh, an extra skill set in your toolbox. So please join us Thursday. Um, and if you can uh, hit subscribe on YouTube and hit the notify because every time uh, our YouTube starts live, it'll send you a notice in case you forget. Um, or if you just want to watch on the playback later, you'll, you'll know that they're up there. So thanks again, guys. And we will see most of you